Well then, who's supposed to preserve all this stuff? There just might be a need for some preservation for recreation when it comes to Mother Nature and man's amazing ability to exploit her bounties. So what about conservation and preservation through regulation when it comes to how do we achieve that balance? So, how about preservation for recreation? You could have a great vacation. The means by which to do it. National Parks. Of course, preservation for recreation when you're on vacation may require some regulation. So all you anti-regulation freaks out there, get your mind right. See? Better without a Trump tower or something here, hey? But wilderness preservation for the whole of the nation requires some lines of demarcation. National Park. And this is private property. Yeah. But you might like to come and visit. But of course, there's that delicate balance between protecting and preserving nature and allowing man to enjoy and partake. Uh, whoa, blame the railroads. Ah, this portly fellow like so many of the old plutocrats of yesteryear could be Cornelius Vanderbilt, could be Collis P. Huntington, Mark Hopkins, or, uh, God help us, Leland Stanford. Much less, this is Sir William Cornelius Van Horn. But of course he's a sir, and he's a van. And he is the railroad man with the plan. And in 1843 he was born. And by 1888 he had the Canadian Pacific Railroad build a metropolis of a railroad hotel in 1900. A castle-like structure based on the motto of since we can't export the scenery, we shall have to import the tourists. Da, 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 da. Get the point? So the point is to get from point to point. Transcontinental railroads in the 1880s, 90s and beyond made it possible to allow man and nature to blend through the vehicle of tourism using the vehicle of railroads. Lake Louise in Canada, for example, in a mountain range replete with be beautiful glaciers, became accessible to man based upon the railroad plan of exporting the scenery to the tourists. Ah yes, nature at her finest, with the exception of a glacier valley filled, smoke filled, fire filled, well, still has a majesty of beauty of its own. It looks like this, and this, and even this, if you trust the fake news, I mean the fake postcards, I mean photographers. How about this fake photo? It's actually pretty real. Glaciers count. On a clear day, the 
even look like that. Oh shoot. Uh, so the key is, as you look at melting glacier here, in the river, is uh, getting man to nature. Because uh, striking that balance between preserving nature and letting folks like us bridge that terrible gap, difficult, troublesome thing, is a political debate, legal debate, moral debate, ethical debate. Some American presidents, uh, Ronald Reagan notoriously wanted to shrink the National Park Service, privatize the lands. We could all enjoy a beautiful national park lake, a glacial lake, but maybe easier with a hotel, hmm. Maybe easier just letting people throw up a tent alongside the river like it used to be in the, back in the day in the 1880s, or get the cruise mobile. Bag her in, bud, back her in. Yep, maybe the highway would be my way, maybe your way, but it does impact the natural surroundings. Ah, but back in the day, the 1880s and on through the 1980s, they had a more singular way. Sort of a two-track, one-track mind, two rails involved. Sleeping cars. And eminently important. Nice, Nigel. Back then, the trains had names. And that's no Killarney. You can sit on the back porch, watch the world go by. Did I say Killarney? Ah, I meant Blarney. Yep, so the Canadian Pacific had a monopoly. Their train, their railroad, their station, their destination, as it was then back in 1910. All aboard. And you'll see what you can afford. Of course, if you got the locomotion, you gotta have promotion. Ah, the romance of it all. Right, Nigel, give it a go. Because the railroad made the hotel as their destination sensation. Maybe we should even overdo it just a little bit for the advertising. But somehow, down at the heart of it, getting the balance between man's needs corporate business, regulations, private enterprise, and preserving nation's wonders takes some kind of doing. A nice hotel will bring them in and they can enjoy it. All right then, we've got location destination involving transportation while preserving and conserving a park for the nation, which means using regulation to help manage the population. Can you believe it?